Hello and welcome to this ratio demonstration example. The purpose of this video is to show you how to conduct a ratio analysis on Australian listed company. My aim in this video will be in actually implementing the ratios. So doing the calculations in Excel, I'll be showing you where I get the different numbers to do the different calculations. So it's more about the implementation rather than the analysis of the ratios, which we'll talk more about in class. So here we go. So in this Excel spreadsheet here, I've got the ratios calculated for Australian Vintage Limited. I'm going to delete the 2020 ratios and we'll go through and uh, recalculate some of these and show you how it's done. So the ones that I'm going to be focusing on mostly are these top ratios here, which all decompose into return on equity. So this is our advanced DuPont analysis. So the first ratio is profit margin and profit margin is equal to NOPAT divided by sales revenue. NOPAT stands for net operating profit after tax, and I'm gonna find that in my reformatted income statement. So to do the ratio analysis, we must first have reformatted our balance sheet and income statement. Okay, so I'm gonna say in Excel, I'm gonna click equals because I'm gonna be doing a formula, and I'm gonna find NOPAT, which I know is in my reformatted income statement. So 2020 reformatted income statement, net operating profit after tax or NOPAT is here, and I'm going to divide through by my sales revenue. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my total sales revenue here. Okay, you could do it from the sales revenue or total. I'm, I'm gonna use the total in this case. Okay, so I've got a profit margin of 5%. And in the notes I've said, I've included both sales revenue and other revenue in my measure of sales revenue. Next up, I'm gonna get my asset turnover. ATO is equal to sales. So again, I'll go to the income statement or the reformatted income statement to get sales and divide through by average net operating assets. Net operating assets or NOA is on my balance sheet and I need to average out two years worth of NOA for this one. So I'm gonna say equals, I'm gonna have a look at my reformatted income statement. I'm gonna take my sales number. I'm gonna divide through. I'm gonna then go to my reformatted balance sheet and I'm gonna type average because I need to take the average of net operating assets. When I'm doing the calculation in 2020, I need to take my 2020 NOA and the previous year, so the 2019 NOA. So I'm, I've typed average and in the brackets, I'm selecting both those terms so that I get the average of those two numbers for my NOA. So I've got an asset turnover of 0 0.66. Next up, return on net operating assets. And it says RNOA is equal to profit margin times asset turnover. So I click equals profit margin here for 2020 times asset turnover for 2020 that I've just calculated, and I get my return on net operating assets of 3.31%. So we have now calculated the operating ratios for Australian Vintage Limited. Not looking too fantastic. We've got a return on assets of around 3% each year. Uh, if you think about a return of 3% over time, it's, it's not fantastic. Over lots of time periods, that's barely as much as uh, interest rates will pay you on your bank account. So. It's positive, which is good, but it's not too high. So they're, they're not looking fantastic in terms of their success over the last few years. So let's now look at how the financing activities are utilized in this business. First up, we're gonna look at financial leverage or FLEV. FLEV is equal to average NFO, net financial obligations, which is gonna be on our reformatted balance sheet. So I'm gonna type equals average. I'm gonna to go to my reformatted balance sheet. I'm gonna find my net financial obligations. I'm gonna take the average for 2020 and 2019. And then it's said to divide by the average owner's equity. So I'm gonna take the average owner's equity for 2020 and 2019. So I've got my average NOA, sorry, an average NFO divided by average equity gives me financial leverage. It's essentially debt to equity, but it's operating, uh, sorry, it's financing debt. My net borrowing cost. The net borrowing cost is essentially your interest rate that you're paying on your debt. And we calculate NBC based on NFEAT, net financial expense after tax. That's how much interest we're paying. That's gonna be on our reformatted income statement, divided by average NFO, how much we've borrowed, which is on the reformatted balance sheet. So I'm gonna to go to my reformatted income statement, net financial expense after tax for 2020. I then divide through by my average, Go to my reformatted balance sheet and I find my average net financial obligations. So essentially what I've done is I've taken the amount of interest I've paid divided by the amount I've borrowed 
to calculate an interest payment, an interest expense, or an interest rate, I should say. Then we've got spread. Spread is equal to RNOA. We just calculated that up here, stands for return on net operating assets, minus NBC, net borrowing cost, which we just calculated here. So we've already got those two terms. The return on my investments is about 3.31%, and I'm borrowing money from the bank at about 2.39%. So I've got a positive spread of 0.92%. If I'm gonna borrow money, I can then use that to invest in assets that are generating almost 1% higher returns. So I've got a positive spread here. Okay, so we've now done the operating and financing activities, ROE, return on equity, net profit over average owner's equity. So I'm gonna to go to my original income statement, net profit for the year 2020 net profit divided by my average owner's equity from my original balance sheet. Okay, I get 3.64%. Now I'm gonna use my um, ratios that I've just calculated, which are using my reformatted statements, and I need to make sure it all checks out and I haven't made any mistakes. So profit margin times asset turnover, that's the equivalent of return on net operating assets. Then plus my financing activity, so plus financial leverage times spread. Okay, my two calculations here calculate the same. Just do it one more time to show that it all works. RNOA plus financial leverage. Okay, my ROE, whether I've recorded it the simple way using my unformatted statements or based on my formatted statements and these ratios, I'm getting the same uh, return on equity. So it's indicating I haven't made any major mistakes here. This section here is your advanced DuPont analysis. These, these are the ratios you'll spend most of your time analyzing, discussing what the changes mean for your firm. When you're doing this for your assignment, you'll be thinking really heavily about what has the business been doing to grow their profit margin from 3.4 up to 5%? What are they changing? Is their branding different? Are they selling to new markets that are willing to pay a higher premium? Have they engaged in cost cutting? What's going on to drive this increase in profit margin? Okay. It's also led to an increase in their RNOA. Is it enough? Is it enough for this business to be successful and sustainable in the long term? With their financing, should they be borrowing more? We've got a positive spread this year. Interest rates are down. Is it a good chance for the business to borrow a little bit more and utilize that positive spread to increase their ROE? Okay. These are the kind of things you'd be researching if you are analyzing this company. The next section here, I've got some asset turnover ratios. Uh, the asset turnover is equal to sales over average NOA. We calculated it up here. Just gonna drag it along for this year's calculation. When we interpret asset turnover ratios to make it a little bit easier, we often do the inverse, so one over the asset turnover. So I'd say one over my asset turnover gives me 1.517. I can then break that down into each of my operating and financing assets and liabilities to see how each of those items individually is turning over. So for example, I can look at my inventory turnover. Okay, so uh, in this particular one, my inventory turnover, what I've got here is I've gone to my reformatted balance sheet and I've taken my average inventory and I've divided through by sales. So this formula here, instead of average NOA as the numerator, I'm putting average cash, average trade receivables, average inventory, average other financial assets, and looking at the turnover divided by sales of each operating asset and each operating liability. I've done that for all these ones. I'm just gonna drag it across. And we see that the way I calculated it originally and then the inverse is equal to the sum of all of these individual asset turnovers minus the liability turnovers. For example here, the inventories, the long-term inventories, the turnovers decreasing quite rapidly. We definitely wanna analyze that if we were trying to value this business in a detailed way, okay? having a look at why their uh, inventory turnover for non-current inventory is decreasing, that could be a worry. And finally, there's a few other ratios that are always great to look at. ROE is our focus in driving returns and analyzing the ratios that help us understand that. But we also have to understand the business's risk and how effective they are at managing risks. So things like the solvency ratios, the liquidity ratios, current ratio, these are all things that also need to be looked at as well. So uh, the solvency ratios here, I've use some simple ones such as total liabilities divided by total equity. I've put a little note here. FLEV looks specifically at financing liabilities. This is slightly different in that it's including all of our liabilities, including operating liabilities like your trade payables and things like that. 
So we would go to the original balance sheet and income statement here to get our total liabilities. So for this one, total liabilities, I need to say my current liabilities plus non-current liabilities divided by, okay, to get the liability to equity ratio. We can do interest coverage ratios to look at how well we're paying off our debt. There's numerous different ways that we can do it. They all should give us a similar story in terms of the details. So here I've said net profit plus interest expense plus tax expense divided by interest expense. This is using accrual accounting, using our income statement to measure interest coverage. When we have to pay the bank interest, we are using our money before we've paid our interest and before we've paid our tax. So we start with our profit, but before we before the profit is calculated, we've already minus off the interest expense. And we're trying to figure out, can we actually make this payment? So we add this interest expense back and we also pay off our interest before tax. So we add back our tax expense to figure out our earnings before uh, interest and tax and divide that through by our interest expense. So again, the, this kind of figure would be straight from our income statement, net profit plus income tax expense plus interest expense or finance costs it's called here. I'm going to put that in brackets and I'm going to divide through by my interest expense or my finance costs to figure out the interest coverage ratio. So I can, based on my profits, I'm more than five times covering the interest expense. So that's looking reasonably safe here. As it gets lower, it indicates a bit more risk in that we're struggling to pay off our interest uh, that's due to the bank. And here I've used some cash flow measures as well. Instead of looking at just our income statement, I've used cash flow from operations, um, and these are just cash flow numbers where possible. So just a few different variations. You don't have to do all of these. They should all tell a similar story um, using the cash flow statement and income statement. In this section, I've got some alternative asset turnover ratios. Again, looking at different accounts. These are these are going to give a similar story to the turnover ratios that we calculated above, but we might express them in slightly different ways. And the example I'll, I'll talk about here would be, say, the average days to sell inventory. So something like an inventory turnover ratio would be in interesting to look at or the average days to sell inventory, how many days it takes on average. So the, these kind of ratios, similar to the turnover ratios we calculated above, but when we calculate the inventory turnover ratio and we do 365 days in the year divided by the inventory turnover ratio, it gives us the number of years that we, ex sorry, the number of days that we take to actually sell our inventory. And we can see that we're selling our inventory quicker on average here. Uh, something like our payables, we can look at how quickly we're paying our bills. On average, we used to be able to pay our accounts payable in 103 days. Now it's up to 109 days. We would need to think about, are we taking longer because we're trying to be strict with our working capital or are we struggling to pay our bills and delaying on our suppliers? Is it a problem or is it a good thing that we're doing this? More research would be required there. So overall, this is just a quick demonstration of how you can work your way through a spreadsheet after you've reformatted your financial statements and calculate some of the key ratios that are important to analyze a business. This is not all the ratios that might be useful for you. For example, I haven't calculated a current ratio here, which may also be a useful measure of the firm's liquidity. But it's an idea of how you can calculate these main ones as part of the advanced DuPont analysis. Then you can spend your time focusing on telling the story about these numbers, what's driving the changes, what's actually happening in the business. Thank you very much.